All right, so this is what this room looks like before we get started on it. I've been telling my daughter we're gonna change her bedroom for the last year and a half. Yeah, that was well, a long time. Now, thanks to COVID-19, Daddy's got some time. So we're gonna build like a bookcase here underneath this window seal, like a little sitting bench, and then put, you know, a bookcase on this side, and a bookcase on that side, maybe some crown molding around the top of it. And then um, we're gonna paint the whole room and get it all the colors that we want. Yeah, this is kind of what we had in mind as a drawing. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. So this is my scribbles on, on what I'm gonna do. Um, earlier you might have seen this drawing. And um, so I just have to have actual dimensions because that's the window itself and everything else I'm building into it. So uh, essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a furring strip on the wall since I'm not gonna remove the baseboard and I don't want the pieces themselves to have an issue with backing right up against the wall. So if you just add a per inch strip, a one by four, then that'll pull it off the wall as far as your baseboard is. So it's also a good idea. If you don't know if you're gonna do a good job and you can always just throw all this away and repaint the wall and caulk the holes and it'll never look like it was there. But I'm also, um, I think I'm gonna come down about three inches from that seal and then on the sides I'm gonna go out about six inches because it's only like a 40 inch window so if she has to sit in that area there she might not be able to you know sit sideways so if you add six inches on either side you get 52 inches to play with and that's even big enough for me to kind of sit down and I'm 6'4 and then uh, the bookcase will go up on either side so that's what I'm starting with. And now it's time to start ripping some of this plywood. I use a lot of DeWalt tools. I just, I don't know, I think it's safe, safer. They have a lot, of, uh, a lot of safety guides on them and I'm just very comfortable with them. So I'm gonna pull out that table saw, compound slider miter saw. If I do need it, uh, I still got my jigsaw. So it's time for us to get to work. back at it. I want to kind of explain what I built here. This is going to be the bench, all right? And on this bench, the only piece missing now is the top here. Um, and the reason why I built it this way is so that there's a solid floor. I want to put a front face on there where it's going to have like, you know, little holes cut out of the plywood so that you could see like, so we could put like baskets in there or what have you. Um, also, as you can see here, put a furring strip on the back. If you notice most of the projects that I do, I don't remove the baseboard, and so this furring strip allows me to come off the wall just far enough so I can leave everything the way it was before I, I built it. Um, otherwise, this sturdy is bomb proof. It's 
about 50 inches across, which will give plenty of room for anyone to sit down. Even myself, I'm pretty comfortable in there. And uh, today, we're gonna finish building this portion here, and then uh, we're also gonna build the bookcases. is to fit um, right beside either side of the actual bookcase um, and that way we can put the plywood up on the sides and go straight up and we should be knocking this out here real soon. Just without taking the baseboards out but it's too much of a hassle the best thing to do is get rid of as much of the baseboards you have to to make it work. Um, I got another tool which I absolutely love. I'm gonna notch out some more of that baseboard and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Seems like they'll be able to <clears throat> give me a door that's just about an inch and a half too short. So we're gonna have to create our own kind of doors, which doesn't seem to be too hard, but it's just not something I was planning on. We bought some trim. Um, as you can see, I like the, the height of the shelf and how everything's come out. Uh, this little frame piece is so that you can have the, uh, the hinge of the cabinet to connect here or at the top, wherever you want it. And um, everything is gonna be flush. We got the shelving. Um, in order to do the shelving, we just took this three quarter plywood and we just stacked one on top of another to give us a thicker um, shelf. We'll put two of those on this side, two on the opposite side. And other than that, we're gonna start applying some trim pieces and baseboards and crown rolling and finishing this project up. So the idea of creating this thicker shelf, um, basically just putting two or three quarter pieces of plywood together and um, use some liquid nail. I've also got one and a half inch uh, nails that I'll run through this pneumatic nailer and um, that should give us a look that we're looking for.
damage. I'm just, you know, hammering the nails to the side, the ones that came through. Um, not much of it came through at all. But this is what I'm looking for, you know. And it's pretty flush, so what I'm gonna do now is just sand it all the way around, and then I've got my double shelf. So, looks pretty good. Um, obviously, um, you know, it's not perfect, but if you uh, use clamps, as you've seen in the video, you use the clamps to get the, um, the sides the way you want them and then just shoot the nail gun through it. Should come out with it. Should work out good for you. So this is the baseboard here. And here's a piece that I notched out. I made it really tight, which is actually perfect, I think. So I'll get this piece in here like this. And uh, just like that. A little caulk won't, won't hurt. But you see I had to notch it a little bit, just kind of make the baseboard kind of flow with it. But there's your baseboard piece there. Then you have your trim piece, which is gonna go here. I'm not sure if I wanna picture frame this out yet. I'm gonna kind of test out a few different pieces, but all in all, at least we're ready to kind of start putting this thing together and securing it. Um, I do have a socket on the wall right there, and I got a socket over there. I mean, I need both of them, but I think I'm gonna cut holes in that plywood and just frame it out make it look real good just in case I ever need that plug because it's better to do it now than to try to do it later. Now, as you can see, I'm attaching, I'm just putting it all together. So I got the bottom piece uh, from over here and I'm just attaching it and then I'm gonna put it in there and start putting this whole thing together. Maybe I can finish this project in a day or so. All right, I'm having her push it level so that I can uh, make sure that the screws go in perfect so there's not any pressure once I uh, put this thing up against the wall. Okay guys, as you can see, I finally got the first bookcase shelf almost complete. And uh, there's a huge gap up against that wall. So um, I used my little stud finder, uh, which is a Zircon. This thing I absolutely love. I was able to find out that the studs in this room are placed, it looks like every 14 inches, and I thought it was normally like 16, but it doesn't matter, it's 14 inches. Um, another telltale sign is you'll normally find if you have a socket here, it's right next to that socket. So anyway, I found it and um, so we made sure that we could, we could drill into it. And then as you can see here, you'll just see it tighten right up. I'm gonna put a few of these in, but. Yep, close the gap just like that. So I'm gonna run a couple of these along the uh, side of this thing and make sure that it's, uh, it's, it's perfect. We're putting the trim on now. And with the trim, 
wanted to make sure that we could put like some very small uh, like finishing nails. They're called like button screws or whatever. So they're finishing screws, uh, trim screws, so that we can apply all of these different pieces here without having a huge nail head shown. And also to put these smaller pieces in because you know that plywood will, uh, it'll separate, it'll split on you. So just gotta be careful. Make sure you don't put it in a place where you're gonna have your hinge at. Flush. Then when you get your trim head screw, perfect. Sturdy. I've been pretty busy putting this trim on. In some areas I added a little finishing nail because uh, those strips are not perfect, so they're a little bent. So it's kind of hard for them to stay on with just a liquid nail. I um, decided to do a little something different here. Uh, so once I put that white trim back on, then uh, that'll look good as well. But all in all, some of these edges that are a little you know, you don't want this to be noticeable later, so I'll just do a little sanding on both sides, a little caulk, and that, that should disappear. Also, all of these, I, I, I sunk them just a little bit so that if you put a little caulk in there, it should disappear. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with how the trim is coming out so far. start trying to figure out what I was going to do with trim um, and then this is a, a piece of wood <clears throat> so just like I said you know I just kind of laid it you know one across and I figured I would finish out the end of every edge with one of these pieces and just go around and make a rectangle and this is what it came out to look like so as you can see I didn't want it to just like have two long pieces and two short pieces so I made it to where the piece would finish off the edge there, but there was some sort of flow or continuity because this piece here finishes off the edge and this piece here finishes off the edge. So just something that's a little bit more unique than just a regular rectangle. And uh, that's my cabinet door. Now you got your cabinet door. We're still making these cabinet doors. We're almost done with this whole project, but I bought a router. Um, and I understand that this router, you know, with the correct bit, should be able to put the hole just where I need it. But we need to go upstairs first. We need to measure exactly where I want these hinges to sit. And I want to see how I, you know, when you open it and close it, if it's doing, you know, how far or close to the edge this has got to be in order for it to work. But uh, we're almost done, man. We're almost wrapping this thing up. As far as the paint on the um, on the actual on the wood, it's very good idea to prime it. Uh, I didn't prime it, so I put, you know, I bought some paint that was all in one primer, and I've had to put on maybe two coats, and I might even go a third coat um, because that white will gray out. Obviously, that wood is bone dry. It's just gonna suck all of that uh, paint in, which is fine. So I'll just keep putting as many coats as, as needed for it to look amazing when it's done. Um, stay tuned.
you still want to have a mask on and definitely some type of ventilation when you're bringing up all this sawdust. You don't want to get all that stuff in your lungs. So yeah, we're going to get it all sanded, man. Get it nice and, and looking amazing. And then we're going to put some paint on it. Just because it's the year 2020, I always like to do something with LEDs. Wasn't sure if I was going to incorporate these or not. Um, and I'm pretty much done with the structural aspect of it. So let's see if we can get these in here and make this thing look a little futuristic. Mm -hmm.